I swear to you too, on the name of the eight weaves one blade, we'll get through tomorrow. Side by side. Of course, Instructor. Swordsmen like us can strive for no less. No, I will exist alongside him. We will be as one. The sword I seek is that of the Void. The gleaming blade that illuminates the darkness. Then show me the light at the end of your journey. Show me by conquering yourself. Form is emptiness. Emptiness is form. First. Ooh. Felix. Gale. Dragoning Pack. Uh, Crimson Slash. I don't know what that one was. Crimson Slash. What was that one? Eight leaves! Breaking Dawn! That. Green Schwarzer, you have mastered the techniques of the Eight Leaves One Blade School. You are granted the title Divine Blade. You may now take on disciples of your own. I accept. to Trails of Cold Steel 4. I ended last episode very weirdly because I kind of didn't know how to end it off and uh, there was thunder so I just thought I'd say thunder. Anyway, we got a thing with Anton and Sharon. Give the guy a little kiss. Wow, what a view, huh? I never would have guessed we'd reunite on a night like this. It certainly is lovely, though we have been keeping correspondence. I believe it's been about a year since we last met face to face. You invited me to tea and gave me such a thoughtful gift back then. You remembered? Why, of course I remember. You were the one to teach me that what beautiful form love could take. How could I ever forget? <laughs> well, you know, I was just a youngster back then, that's all. Come on, Anton, you're enjoying this way too much. I love Sharon. Really, she may have rejected me, but there's something I need to tell her while I can. I do wonder, why did you choose to come so far as Erebonia now? This may sound presumptuous, but it could it be that you came to see me? Uh, n no, you've got it all wrong. Well, actually, I mean, not all wrong. You don't know much, you don't know how much joy it brings me that you travel all this way for me. But as I already told you in my letters, you should utterly forget about me. I am not the person you think I am. Wait, but... I'm sorry I haven't told you this before. My wife is one that's shrouded in darkness. The way I conduct myself and the way I, the way I love with selflessness is to cover up that part of me. So please stop this. It's best you never come and see me again. Sh sharon <laughs> You don't mean that! Perhaps I should have said all of this sooner. No, Sharon, can't you see? My heart aches when I think of yours. Huh? I realized something. In your final letter, I get the feeling you were trying to push back your own emotions. Under all that kindness, you harbor a terrible sorrow. It's weighed you down for a very long time, I believe. And that's why I had to tell you this one thing. You've had troubles in your life and maybe you've lost hope in yourself. But I believe in you. Your experiences have made you who you are. Someone who makes everyone around her smile. I... Sorry, maybe I've overstepped there. But I really need to get that off my chest. I feel much better now. Anyway, I better get going, huh? Promise me I'll take care of yourself, Sharon. Anton, wait. Uh huh? 
You took me by surprise, but now allow me to say something in return. I feel that I can finally face both my family, and even myself because of you. So thank you. If ever so, I'm ever so grateful you came to see me. <coughs> kiss, 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 come on. Anton? Your face is so red. Perhaps you should take a rest. Ah, oh, Ricky, I think I'm in heaven. I only heard bits and pieces of their conversation, but it probably wasn't something I should be listening in on. Still, I'm pretty sure that Sharon feels just the same as he does. I'm glad they were reunited before the battle begins. Oh. Come on, give my man a kiss. My man has been been at this for so long. Ever since the games began, Anton has been trying to find some love. Aww, my guy. It's funny when I first met you, all I knew you as was the guy who screamed about hating this, the summer festival. And then what did I do? I looked at all the past games, saw some side quests, and there you were. My man. I can't believe it. I actually got to spend some time with Sharon. It feels like a dream. One I hope I won't have to wake up from anytime soon. Oh, that reminds me. Olivier, the guy who invited me, he gave me this. You can have it. I've already had plenty of fun. Okay, if you're sure. Thanks. Of course, go ahead and enjoy yourselves. My man. I can't believe this is finally happening, but what am I supposed to talk about? I know, Sharon, would you like to hear about my travels? It's nothing all that special, but... Oh, don't say that, Anton. I'd love to hear more about some of the things you've seen and done on the road. Oh, wow, well, that's great! Okay, so there was this time I was hanging out in the capital of Burl, and... Aw, oh, man, it's, it's lovely. Damn, I can say it right here... Right there? Th this Anton finally getting love. Well, I guess I don't know if we could. Yeah, I could say Sharon does really love him. This finally happening. Oh man. This can make any single guy feel sad. Like, where the hell is my love? Anyway, um, we have a ticket. So what do we do with it? Hmm. Huh. You know what? Let's go to, um... Let's get a drink with Ash. Actually, no, hold on. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna go back to the Castle of Mirrors again. I wonder if Ash will come along with this one. I hope the thunder doesn't mean the power will go out at some point. I'm just not gonna save for a while. Or I'll save the quip if I do save. Yeah, that'll probably be a better plan. So can I bring Ash along in this? Mmm... No. Uh, I guess I'll just bring Ash along for the drink then. Alright. Oh wait, I thought Ash was available for this. Oh, he isn't. Was he available for the Spark Horse? Yeah, he is. Yep. Two guys with Spark Horse? That's a whole new kind of aesthetic, don't you think? Something bothering you, Ash? Nah, I was just thinking back on when I went to the Sun Festival with my mom. Oh. Hey, that sounds like a good memory for you though, right? <sighs> Let's cut the sappy stuff, yeah? Forget I said anything. Yeah. Looks like they're all burned out. Looks like, uh... Well, look. I guess you want to do this again, I'm game. Wouldn't want you to get all lonely without me or whatever. Just bring some real-ass fireworks next time, got it? No. <laughs> Got it. Dun dun. Thunder, 
Hey, Schwarzer. One last thing. You need to let <clears throat> What is it? You seem serious. Well, this really might be the last time we see each other. I'm only gonna say this once, though, so listen up. Thanks. Ash. <laughs> well, I never. I've never heard you say that so earnestly before. <sighs> Don't make a big deal about it. Just figured it was the right thing to do with everything that's gonna happen tomorrow. Joining up with you and all the other clowns in Class 7 ended up helping me find myself again. So I'm ready to settle some debts. For everything that happened 14 years ago, and all the crap I put us through too. There's someone else I owe too. A certain nosy as hell camp counselor who goes around carrying more than his share of burdens. Then in that case, allow me to thank you too. You're not the only one who has debts to settle with the Grey Twilight. And we're going to do just that tomorrow. Let's show this curse we're stronger than it gives us credit for. <laughs> no need to tell me twice. You got my back and I got yours. Very nice. And that's all the events we can do. Got that footage saved and the game saved. If the power goes out, well, uh, so much I can do. Time to call it a day. Hmm? Orb mail? Now? <laughs> I'll be waiting at the wetlands. <sighs> it could be a trap. Maybe I should just ignore it. should go check it out. What should I do? It could be a trap. It has to be her, but why now? I don't want to make everyone worry, so I'll just go on my own. On my way. So you came after all. Yeah, I know all about it now. Um, what's with the outfit? Oh, this? I wasn't sure about it at first either. But it's a uniform for the Knights in, of Blood and Iron. I feel a little embarrassed wearing this thing, to be honest. Oh, no, it, um, I think it suits you. It's really flattering. Wait, uh, what am I saying? <laughs> so, I take it this means you're done with the RMP? Yes, now that Operation Omengard is ready, the RMP will be obsolete. I'll be joining up with Governor General Rufus, Prince Cedric, Lecter, and the others tomorrow. We'll all be mobilizing on board the whatever that was again. I see. I'm sorry, Reen. I couldn't change after all. I set up this meeting so we could see each other one last time. Claire. Don't go easy on me now. As an Ironblood, I have a duty to apprehend you. I could force you to go to where the upcoming rivalries will be taking place. Likewise, you have an opportunity to incapac incapac incapacitate one of your enemy's pawns. I hope you're not going to pass it up. Either way, we both have a lot to gain, don't you think? You may be right, but I still haven't given up on you. How? How can you possibly say that? I had you come here alone. I could have easily been planning an ambush. Please give me some credit. I would have sensed that there was anyone else here beside us. You came here alone, same as me. 
You didn't want Lecter or one of your other allies interfering, right? Besides, even if I wasn't able to sense a sneak attack coming, I know you wouldn't pull that kind of trick. That's not the Claire Reedvelt I know. <sighs> Nobody bears a grudge against you. Not me or Milliam or Altina or Yuna. Everyone in the old Class 7, even Sarah would be happy to have you back on our side. There's no going back now. It won't change no matter what kind of front you put on, or how much you try to resist us. I'm sure it's the same for your brother, and Major Irving. We all care about you so much. We'll never give up on you. Stop it. How can you be so cruel? I... I stood by and let Milliam die. I'm still going along with the Great Twilight. Don't you dare forgive me. If you don't hate me, how am I supposed to... Come on now, Claire. You know that isn't fair. <sighs> Milliam, you're here. <laughs> yeah, I saw you sneaking out. I just got used to stand down while I came on my own to check things out. I should have known you were just going to meet a lovely lady. Oh, and speaking of that, your outfit is so cool, Claire. <laughs> right? Uh, how? <laughs> my body may be gone, but my spirit lives on in the sword. And thanks to the Steel Maiden, I can walk around outside it again. Didn't Campanella tell you? Hmm, well, I guess he's not that type to share. Uh, Malium, it's really you. I'm so glad. I... Yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to make you cry. <laughs> I'm really bad at this stuff. I really need to work on my social skills, huh? Milliam. Milliam, I... I'm not gonna make a mistake like that again. Even with what's happened, I'm still an iron blood. I've gotta look out for you, too. Tomorrow, we'll finally settle things once and for all. With you, Lecter, Rufus, Gramps, and that newbie prince, too. Me and Reen will get through to you guys. <laughs> She's right. We'll see you tomorrow. Regardless of, oper of Operation Yomangard or Mio Mirage, I promise you that, as a member of the Radiant Wings. Just have patience until then. Alright, if you insist. I'll be waiting for you. That's my promise as a knight and guardian of the Great Twilight and a pawn of the rivalries. When next we meet, I won't show any mercy. Okay. We'll come at you with everything we've got. Sorry, I didn't mean to waste so much of your time on an important night like this. But I'm really happy I got to see you. Thank you, Reen. You too, Milliam. Yeah, same here. Claire? Ooh, that's a pretty fancy airship she came on. I wonder if it's one of those high-speed RMP dealies. Man, I wish we could have come along and checked it out. I bet it'd make for one heck of a joyride. <laughs> if only things were that easy. For now, just seeing her face again is enough for me. We'll set everything right tomorrow. Yep, you bet we will. <laughs> Meeting in secret like this was pretty fun, huh? I won't deny that, but we should be getting back. And Roger! I wonder what that's about. Every cut you see is me just using that to save and save the game because I have a feeling the power might go out and I'm just not taking any chances of that today. Anyway, time to call it a day.
Before long, the festivities started to come to a close. Those who attended readied themselves to head back to the hotel. After parting ways with everyone else, Reen found himself wandering toward the pier with no particular purpose in mind. You can just about see everything from here. The Courageous Two, the Merkabas, the Bobcat, even the Pantagruel. And across from it all, Crossbell City and the blinding lights of Orcus Tower. The celebration's going to be over soon. Everyone's probably heading back to their rooms. Mm, what a wonderful breeze. <laughs> that sounds like... Wow, this is an amazing view. I can see Michelam, the Pantagruel, and even Crossbell City. Bringing me here to sober up. My, you really know how to show a girl a good time. <laughs> oh, it's nothing like that. I simply got the idea when we landed here this evening. More to the point, I had anticipated your inevitable inebriation, my dear Shara. <laughs> you really do know me. This is nice. I miss those days when we were able to share drinks together. But you've been doing a fantastic job ever since coming back to the Empire. Though they call you debaucherous prince, you never let it get to you. You've been there for your family. Hell, the whole Empire. Well, I've never been without people supporting me. Mueller, my parents, Alfin, Class 7, the Viscount, the Erebonian Bracers. I can't forget Lloyd's team, and of course Estelle and Joshua. But most of all, you. No, I couldn't do a thing to help you. Sure, I held on to the artifact for you, and acted as a liaison, but I couldn't stop the Courageous from being destroyed. I couldn't keep you safe. I'm sorry, Olivier. I'm sorry that I wasn't there for you. It must have been painful. You've suffered so much. Now that you're here, all that pain is but a distant memory. We'll be there tomorrow. Together. That's all that matters. But... No, you're right. Just leave it to me. The Silver Streak will light the way for your radiant wings. I'll be counting on it. And it may not be fair to ask you at a time like this, yet. Uh? If we can claim victory in tomorrow's battle and stop the Great Twilight, if we can put out the fires of war and bring peace to this land once more, would you do me the honor of becoming my wife? Ooh, whoops. Didn't mean to invade their privacy there. Still, I know they were close, but not this close. I guess that incident will Burl must have really helped bring them together. Can't say for sure if she'll accept his proposal or not. But I hope she does. I'm rooting for you, your highness. What am I saying? I have my own decisions to make right now. <sighs> Who should I be spending my last night with? We've gone through so much in school and work alike. Every moment we've spent together is a precious memory to me. But still, don't act like this is going to be the end. Someday, we'll look back on tomorrow as just another day in our lives. I'm sure of it. But jokes aside, can we talk more sometime? I'd like to tell you some things. Things like my father, about what happened at the Infernal Castle, about what happened after you graduated. I want you to know the whole story, from start to finish. Of course! I'd love that. <laughs> hmm. 
Miss Herschel, my apologies for being late. What's with the miss? I keep telling you there's no need for formalities with me, Ring. I know I keep having to mention I'm older than you, but we are still colleagues, you know? Sorry, sorry. It's just, well, I was raised to respect my elders, after all. <laughs> Gosh, Reen. It's always something with you. You know how I feel. And this is what I get in return. I'm only teasing. I really am glad you came. <laughs> then show it, why don't you? I'm sorry. I was just trying to lighten the mood. I know you're worried about me being the sacrifice. But like I promised, I don't know what the future holds, but I promise you, I won't give up until the very end. I'm not giving up. Not when the future still holds so much for everyone. For us. For us. I love you, Toa. They say the best things come in the smallest packages. <laughs> no worries, after all, you're so tiny. My, I wonder what you were about to say. You have more courage, determination, and a bigger heart than anyone. There isn't no way anyone expects you to be able to do what they can. But despite that, you took it upon yourself to accept such a crucial position in Vine Counter Rosette's place. You are doing everything you can to fulfill that role, even when you're just a student. Seeing you work like that is what's inspired all of us, you know? We wouldn't be the same team without you. Even when you push yourself too hard, I love every part of you. Shortcomings included. There's nothing I want more than to be by your side, now and forever. Reen, I... I want to be with you too. Not just as a friend, or a colleague, but as your one and only. They really went all out, huh? Yeah. By the way, Reen, don't think I didn't notice all those little jabs you snuck in there. I just wanted to be as honest with you as I can. Like I said, I love every part of you. And well, you know, little jabs for a little- <gasps> Okay, enough is enough. If you really love me, then you have to prove it. I'm not going up there, you know. Hmm. Oh. Well, or is that too much work for you? Of course not. As a matter of fact, this is perfect for us. <laughs>